Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to create uh, petals of a flower, or, well, basically this. Alright, so we'll start with a new definition as we usually do. I'm going to get rid of this, and the basis of this is going to be a graph mapper. Um, we're going to we're going to create a Bezier curve, and uh, actually I won't mess with the value or the shape of it just yet. I'm going to, uh, whoops, wrong component. I'm going to plug in a range, not a data range, um, and I'm going to set my steps to a maximum value of uh, let's go 20. We probably won't use that many for this definition. I'll just set it to four for now. And we're going to construct a point. Actually, it's just con point. It was there. There it is. Yes. Um, so before we plug these in, we need to we need to pass them through a multiplier, or else we're just going to have very, very small values. So I'm going to plug my range into one of these. I'm going to plug my graph mapper into the other one. And then I'll create two sliders and we'll give them both a maximum value of 30. And so this is my Y and this is my Z. And as I increase these we'll get the shape of our graph. So maybe I'll do something like this for now. What I'm also going to add in is an addition. And you'll see what this is going to do in a sec. This is basically just going to give me an offset so that I'm not working right at the origin, which is going to be useful in a few minutes. Alright, now we're also going to create another graph mapper, and this is going to be used for our rotation. But firstly, we're going to interpolate these points that I've created here. Okay, so this graph mapper, uh, we don't need to worry about the shape of it just yet, but I am going to multiply it by, okay, for starters, we're going to go pi over 2 times x. The reason we're using pi over 2 is because pi over 2 is equal to 90 degrees, and so the maximum amount I'm probably going to want to rotate one of these petals is 90 degrees, and then we're going to multiply it by x, which is going to be our graph input, and we're also going to multiply it by y, so that I've got another custom variable so that I can control uh, my range of rotation as well. Okay, so that's our x value and our y value is just another slider. Okay, and now we are going to rotate these points this angle. And so we're using the same range component for both of these so that it will give us the same step size for both so that we don't have any disparity between the number of points and the number of rotation values. Alright, and now I'm also going to create a negative instance of these numbers. I'm going to create another rotation component. I'm going to plug that in and I also need two more interpolate curves. And I've just arranged these in the order that I'm going to connect them into my loft in a sec. Okay, loft. And now we'll plug these in. And, uh, okay, it doesn't look great at the moment, but uh, we'll deal with that in a sec. Um, because we're not dealing with very heavy geometry, what I can do with this definition is I can set it to high quality preview, just so that it's uh, it's giving me better feedback on my result. All right, so maybe I'll take this rotation value at the end right back to zero, so we're getting a nice point over there. Um, 
I quite like the way this is petering out. You can control how much rotation we're getting. And maybe I'll mess around with this curve a bit as well. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that. Actually, no, you know what? I do want to change this a little bit as well. So we've got a little bit more of a a little bit more of a stem opening over there. All right, now we are going to put this loft through a rotation. And for this, I'm going to create another range component. Oops. Range. Plug that into my angle. I am going to set my domain for this range. Actually, I don't need the domain component because all I'm going to be doing is 2 times pi times x. And we'll make this an integer slider from 0 to maybe 20. Okay. Um, and we also need another slider here. Um, I'll set this to maybe 36 for now. Okay, so that's not quite what we want yet. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm also going to add in a scale non-uniform component. So I'm going to scale each of these based on another range component. It's still with the same number of steps, but my range is going to be based off of, well, not consecutive domains, construct domain. Okay, so this is going to be my x and y scaling. Okay, now it's looking a little bit weird at the moment, just because we've got such uniformity. But as soon as I switch this up a bit, um, let's see. Maybe somewhere around there. That's uh, it's starting to look quite nice. And so if we just bake that out. Um, you know what, that's maybe a bit too many petals for my liking. Maybe I'll come back in here and I'll turn this down to you know, something a lot smaller. Okay, I think 21 was nice. There we go. So if I bake that out, there we go. Really nice looking flowery sort of thing. Um, of course, because this is all completely parametric, what we can do is we can go back here, and if we wanted, we could almost, to an extent, sort of uh, simulate how the flower would open up. So it would sort of start off kind of looking a bit more closed like this. We could decrease the radius, and so it would sort of open up, and then using our Bezier, we can control the shape of it as it, well, as it opens, I suppose. There we go. There's our definition. Hope you enjoyed it.